We actually developed what we call dynamic safety boundaries. I'm all about starting small incrementally and learning as you go. And if you ever want to debate the pros and cons of regulation, you know where to find Peter. I, what I like about that analogy is it also brings to mind that we're talking about something different than we've talked about with software in decades past, which is software has been right. operating in sort of a virtual environment. Yes, it was making credit decisions. It was writing marketing text, et cetera. But like we're talking now about agents that have real physical impacts on people too. We're talking about physical safety. We're talking about agents that schedule transportation, agents that, that are involved in self-driving cars, agents that are taking on tasks that can actually have real world physical manifestations of what the agent does. And, and I mm -hmm. think that makes it maybe even more immediate. Not that you weren't, not that your day wasn't completely ruined if a, if an AI model made a faulty credit decision on your behalf, but it wasn't ruined with the same impact that a out of control self-driving car would ruin it. So I feel like the, the stakes, I guess my point is the stakes of AI, including agentic AI going off the rails are only getting higher as more and more parts of our daily lives are influenced by it. And you've seen a lot of relevant um, uh, articles in the paper fairly recently. So I think there's real concern here, especially when it comes to things like mental health and um, yeah. you know individuals considering suicide and telling it how to tie a knot mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. Um, which is which is honestly frightening. Yeah. So I think it's sh we should have some f some sort of regulation at least when it comes to public safety. So anything that can uh, affect people's safety. That's why you know GDPR was so popular in I mean popular uh, in in Europe when it came because it, it was protecting uh, people's rights. It, it, it was giving people the right to you know be. Um, having different rights and maybe we have can have a regulation that is focused on public safety and how what what uh, explaining the intent of agents when it's um when it's about i think i said public safety three times but yeah no i i get it i i think you're right i think it, it needs it, at a minimum we need to have a strong view towards public safety and i think look i'll, I'll say this from a very um you know, domestic American point of view. The other thing that has to be clear, and, and I hate that this is the reality, but the reality is legal liability has to be clearly established, right? If you look at, I'm not going to go into Article 238 or whatever it is, and all of the, you know, all of the ways in which content providers can dodge liability for internet content, but it, it's a mess. I think if you go back to the idea of like, think about, a crew on a on a military sailing ship in the 1800s, right? The way that you got accountability was that captain is ultimately accountable for everything that happens on that ship. And that captain is therefore strongly incented to know what's going on, right? And that concept carries through to an airline captain today, right? Once that plane leaves the ground, the airline captain is the ultimate authority and everything is account. He is accountable for everything that happens. What we need with Agentic is that same, I think, is we need that same clear accountability. We need it very clear that companies that deploy Agentic technology are accountable, are liable for what those agents do. We saw the mm -hmm. case, um, I, I looked it up while we were talking a second ago, it was the case that happened in uh, uh, 2024 with uh, Air Canada, where mm. uh, I don't know if you remember this one, but this is a passenger who used an AI chatbot to ask about the rules for bereavement fails, fares and was told erroneously that they could take certain steps, purchase a ticket now, and then retroactively supply documentation and get a, I think it was a partial refund, but somehow qualify for the bereavement fare. That was the wrong information that the AI chatbot gave them. And Air Canada refused to make them whole. And it and, and they said, that wasn't us. That was an AI agent that did that. And we're not accountable for that. Um, at least in Canada, the uh, the courts ruled against Air Canada and said, nope, it's your agent. Hmm. You own it. You operate it. You're accountable for what it does. Pay the man. But like, we have to have that in, in this, in this Definitely. world. Do, do, do you agree yeah. with that? 
Definitely, I agree because that's the the, the interesting part with the uh, with the agents now. Because who is really responsible? Is 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 it the 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 LLM? Is it the 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 act? I mean, this the person give you the goal. If you have a multi agent system with five agents, if you have right. a manager and then specialist agents in in and then one of them is doing something wrong, who would be responsible? Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe to us over on YouTube. And make sure to stay up to date with us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify as well. Yeah.